Hey everybody, Felix here from InventBox where the solution is right around the corner. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at something called interrupts. Now interrupts are exactly what they sound like. You've got some code running and something more important comes along. So you interrupt it, do that other thing, and then it goes back to running what it was doing. So I've created a program here using all information that we've learned. I've got two LEDs and a switch, and then we're initializing those as inputs and outputs. Here we have the LED turn on for two seconds, then off, wait two seconds, and then it reads the switch and then turns on LED2 if the switch is on and turns off LED2 if the switch is off. Now in order to see this work, let's head over and take a look at the Arduino circuit that I have set up. Okay, so we have two LEDs here. Each of the ground pins are hooked up to their own 220 ohm resistor. Those are both hooked up to ground on the Arduino. Then pins 12 and 13 are hooked up to the positive leads of the LEDs. And then there's a switch over here one pin is hooked up to pin eight, and then the other is hooked up to ground. So here are our LEDs again, pins 12 and 13, and then with the switches on pin eight, as we saw. Let's go ahead and run this. And the behavior that I want is for this LED one to blink every two seconds, and as soon as I turn the switch on, I want LED2 to come on, and then I want LED2 to go off as soon as I turn the switch off. Okay, so let's upload this and try it. Good, so LED1 is blinking every two seconds. And LED2 just turned on, so it must be in the on position. So if I turn the switch off, it should turn off, and it doesn't. Oh, wait. It just turned off as soon as LED1 turned on. If I try to turn it back on, it comes back on, but it only after LED1 turns on. So we see that whenever I change it, it only updates when LED1 turns back on. So why is that? Well, it actually makes perfect sense because that's what we told it to do, even though it's not what we want. There's four seconds of delay here before it gets to reading the switch and then changing the state of LED2. So that means that there is a maximum of four seconds of delay before LED2 ever changes. It might be less than that. Depends on when you flip the switch, right? So how can we change it so that the LED turns on or off as soon as we change the switch? You guessed it, we're gonna use interrupts. So to use an interrupt, we need to create a function for it. And we try to keep interrupts as simple as possible. So it's not gonna return anything, it's just gonna be a void function. And we'll call it LED ISR. That stands for interrupt service routine. And we will just bump this code that changes the LED straight into the interrupt function instead of in the main loop. Then we need in the setup to tell the Arduino that an interrupt is gonna occur and trigger this function. We do that with attach interrupt. This takes three arguments. First, it needs the pin on the Arduino that you're going to be watching. Now this is actually not going to be the same pin numbers that we're familiar with. What you'll need to do is look up which interrupt pins your Arduino has. So I looked up Arduino Uno internet 
interrupt pins and I found that pins two and three on the Arduino are called interrupt pins zero and one. So if I hook something up to pin two, then I can reference it as pin zero. Kind of confusing, but that's just the way they did it. So interrupt pin zero is pin two. Before we forget, let's change our switch to pin two so that when the switch changes, we can trigger the interrupt. Next, we need to tell it what function, what code to run. That would be LED ISR that we just did down here. And lastly, when you want the interrupt to fire. Here we have four options. The first is rising. So that would be any time the voltage on this pin that it's watching goes from low to high, zero to five volts. You also have falling, which would be high to low. Or we can do change anytime this pin changes voltage. And lastly, we have low, anytime the pin is low voltage. And if this is the case, then it will be continually running the interrupt over and over and over and nothing else will be running. So that's just a useful thing to keep in mind. For this example, let's put it on change. So anytime we change the switch, we want to run this code that will update the LED's state. Okay, we should have everything that we need. Uh, one last thing actually that we need to add before we do this is in the interrupt routine, if you have a variable being changed, in this case state, we need to warn the Arduino that it might change unexpectedly due to user input or something. So to let it know that it might change at any moment, we put volatile in front of it. Now we should be good to go. We will go ahead and upload it. And before we can actually use this, let's not forget to move our switch from pin eight to pin two, which is the interrupt pin that we hooked it up to. Now let's try, there we go. LED two moves as soon as we flip the switch. Meanwhile, LED one keeps on blinking two time or keeps on blinking every two seconds, just like we want. So there you have it, interrupts in a nutshell. So go ahead and play around with those a little bit. And if you didn't build the circuit exactly as I did it and set up your interrupt function exactly what I did, then you might run into an issue where it behaves very strangely and turns on and off seemingly at random. If that's you, have no fear. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. It's a very common mistake to make with interrupts, and I made it my first time using interrupts. So stick around for that.